Hey fam, what's up? It's April. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It's Monday the 27th of April and before we get into the vlog, um, I just got two packages in the mail and I think these are both from my friend Paige from Pages with Paige. I will leave her channel linked in the corner. Basically, um, she sent me something really exciting um, and then she, I think she sent me something off my Amazon wish list. So, what the heck? Let's open these and cry together. So we'll start. Oh my god. Paige! <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to message her right now. I am set for at least a couple months now. If you didn't know, you can buy these at Kmart in Australia if you're in need of sticky tabs. And we also have an envelope and inside the envelope I'm assuming is yes I can feel it is something else oh oh my god a little card oh my gosh we've got a little <laughs> a little another tab thing that is the sweetest thank you so much Paige oh my gosh and inside the envelope is Animal Crossing New Leaf oh my gosh I'm so excited to play this so I've never played Animal Crossing apart from um, New Horizons, which is the new game, and she had a spare of this lovely game, which I believe was the game that came before New Horizons, so I'm gonna get out my 3DS and I'm gonna play this one as well. I'm so excited! And then we have this Amazon package. Oh my goodness, I have been spoilt today. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, is there a note? I saw what book it is though. This is the Illustrated History of Notable Shadow Hunters and Denizens of Downworld by Cassandra Clare and illustrated by Cassandra Jean. I read this in last week's vlog and I lost my marbles over it. Actually, it would have been the week before last week's vlog. And I lost my marbles because of the absolutely stunning illustrations. Wait, where's the one of Jem? I think that's my favorite. Look! Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so, so excited to own this. Thank you so much, Paige. Oh my God. I am so grateful for my wonderful friends. Okay, so um, it is one o'clock in the afternoon and I've already finished a book this week, which is just my thing. And in completing the book that I just completed, I have officially read 30 things in April. That is completely wild to me. I am shook it. <laughs> so the book that I finished this morning was an audiobook of Toffee by Sarah Crossan. I received this from I received this from the publisher last year sometime. And it is a YA contemporary. It's told in verse. And it's about this girl called Allison who runs away from home because her father is very abusive. And she finds herself staying with this old lady who has dementia. So the old lady thinks that she is one of her old friends called Toffee. So she's kind of like taking advantage and living with this old woman while also forming this strong bond with this old lady. Wow, uh, this really tugged on my heartstrings. It's very emotional. I will leave my review in the description with the trigger warnings and everything. Um, but yeah, this was so good. The audiobook was amazing and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I'm quite picky with giving out five stars, but this one uh, definitely packed a punch and I definitely recommend it if you want to feel all the things and potentially cry. <laughs> so I've read that. Then for the rest of the month, we've got how many days left? Two and a half days in the month? Three and a half? I don't know. I can't count. Um, I'm currently reading The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. I'm only 16 pages in, but this is apparently a very fast read. And honestly, I could probably finish this entire thing today and I might just do that. But then again, I might spend a lot of time playing New Leaf. Who knows? I do have another audiobook checked out from my library of Ice Station by Matthew Riley. I own book two in the series, but I didn't own book one and I wanted to read book one. So I put it on hold at the library and it just came in. So I would also maybe like to finish that before the month is over. 
I know we've only got a couple of days left and the audiobook is 15 hours long so that's 7.5 hours on double speed which honestly I could probably do quite easily so I guess that's my TBR for the next few days this and ice station and then it'll be May and it's the Asian readathon so we will talk about that when it happens but for now I just need to finish editing last week's vlog and then I'm gonna play New Leaf <laughs> is my Amazon package <laughs> excuse me I just look like a mess in this entire vlog I'm so sorry but it is now Wednesday I got hardly any reading done yesterday during the day because I was facetiming with Paige all day I mean it was so much fun we had a high school musical sing-along it was just a great time so I didn't really get to reading until nighttime before I went to sleep but I did end up getting a third of the way through The Loneliest Girl in the Universe and I'm really enjoying it so far I'm hoping it'll like pick up soon I feel like I'm just ready for it to move on to the next stage it's about this girl who is the only passenger on this spaceship because we don't know what happened but all of the astronauts on the spaceship died five years previously including her parents so she's 16 years old she's the only person on this spaceship that's bound for a potential habitable planet it's set in the future but not too far in the future and she starts getting transmissions from earth saying that there's a war going on and she's no longer getting any messages she has no idea what's going on back on earth but they did tell her that another spaceship has been sent after hers and because of the advanced technology it'll get to her in a few years so she started communicating with the guy on the other spaceship and they're both really confused they have no idea what's going on back on earth but they're sort of taking comfort in talking to one another so that's sort of where we're up to but apparently this turns into like some sort of like thriller i have no idea what's gonna happen but i'm very excited and then i am also three hours and 15 minutes into the audiobook of ice station so i have 12 hours left which is six hours on double speed but i'm listening to this on 1.75 speed and i don't know how to do math so a little over six hours left so i would really like to get halfway through this today and halfway through ice station today because tomorrow is the last day in the month so we'll read the other halves of these tomorrow but i have a package to open so this is a package from amazon i ordered two books i only needed to order one book but to get free international shipping i had to order another book i mean i'm not complaining but um the main book that i ordered I ordered because I'm going to be rereading and annotating it soon and I didn't own the physical copy. So let's open this bad boy up. So that book is Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare and Friends. I have read this before but I think I read them on ebook or audiobook. I don't remember how I consumed them last time. But after I read City of Heavenly Fire in May this will be my next Shadowhunter reread and annotation book. So I needed a physical copy obviously. And it was way cheaper on Amazon than on Book Depository so that's why I ordered it from Amazon. And in order to get free shipping, I got a graphic novel, uh, The End of Summer by Tilly Walden. This is very 
different in size than her other ones that I've read. So I think it was back in February or March, I read, what the fuck is it called? What is it called? Oh my God, what is it called? Are you listening? That's what it's called. Um, and I gave it five stars and I've also read On a Sunbeam by her, which I gave 4.5 stars. So I think she's gonna be one of my new favorite graphic novelists. So I decided to pick up another one of hers. This is The End of Summer. It's really thin and really tall. And unlike her other works that I've read, this one is entirely in black and white, which is interesting. I have no idea what it's about, but it has a person on a giant cat. So, obviously, I, I got it. <laughs> and I also got this because I have no books on my graphic novel physical TBR at the moment. So, decided to add that. So, that's what's happening. I'm just gonna read today and just chill out. I've already done like everything that I need to do for today. Like, I've gone out and gotten my meds and stuff like that. So, we're home. It's time to relax. Let's read some books. Hello. It's Friday. I have sucked at vlogging this week. I have just been a potato. So it is the 1st of May today, so it is the start of the Asian readathon, and I know what you're all wondering, did I manage to finish those two books before April ended? Yes I did. So I finished The Loneliest Girl in the Universe, and I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. It does turn into like a psychological thriller, but I will say that the like reveal was kind of underwhelming. <laughs> Like, it could have been way more exciting than that, let's be honest. But I still really enjoyed it. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I read the last two-thirds of this so quickly. And I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. And this has anxiety rep, so we'd love to see it. And then yesterday, on the last day of the month, I finished Ice Station by Matthew Riley. And I loved this as well. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This is, like, pure action adventure. It's like watching an action movie but better so i know not everyone is into that type of thing but sometimes it's just really fun um you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit while reading it because it's 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 wild <laughs> but um i really enjoyed it there's a character called mother um that's her call sign and it's not because she's like a motherly figure or anything it's because she's a motherfucker <laughs> and i love her so much like new favorite character and there's also um this girl who has a pet seal this is set in Ant antarctica and she has this pet seal who is like super intelligent and amazing and oh it was so much fun like it's not perfect or anything but i gave it four out of five stars and i'm excited to continue on with the series because i actually own the second book that's why i read the first book via audio because i didn't own it any <laughs> So like I said, it's the first day of the Asian readathon. Um, I've already started my first book for it, and that is Night of the Dragon by Julie Cargoire. This is the third book in the... I don't know what the series is called, but the first book is Shadow of the Fox. It's an Own Voices Japanese-inspired fantasy trilogy, and this is the last book. And I'm buddy reading this with my friend Kara from Bianca Reads, who I talk about in every vlog, so you should all know her by now. <laughs> but I'm listening to the audiobook and she's reading it physically, so I think I'm like three chapters in, and I have to get up to chapter nine for today because we've decided to read it over the course of four days. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I love how it like recapped everything for me in the first chapter because I have forgotten everything that happened in the last book. So yeah, that's my current audiobook. Um, um, but I also decided to start a physical book. I haven't started it yet, but I will start it today. And that is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan. I am finally getting around to reading this. This is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire. It's another Own Voices Asian-inspired fantasy. Um, the author is from Malaysia. And this is also female-female. So, love it. So I'm planning on uh, reading this over the weekend. So I've got three days to read it. And we can totally do it because we're not doing anything else. So those are the two books I'm currently reading. But I have another package to open. I don't know what's going on this week, but it's just package galore apparently. This one is from Booktopia. So if you didn't know, um, the wonderful Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin is hosting Believeth-on Round 2 this month, which is where we just read middle grade books for two weeks. And I'm so excited and I may or may not have ordered a couple more books for Believeth-on. <laughs> 
I'm just so excited, okay? Plus, these are books that I would have purchased anyway. Um, this just sped up the process of me purchasing them. So, let's open it. Oh, it doesn't have a dust jacket. That's interesting. Okay, this... Wow. Okay, okay. This is by one of my favourite middle grade authors of all time who wrote the Delta Request series, which is the series that got me into reading when I was 10 years old. Uh, I believe this is her latest fantasy story. It's called The Glim. Oh, look at this. I love this cover. And this is illustrated by Mark McBride. Oh, we've got a map. We've got a map and it is like filled with illustrations. This is what, what, what? Lion people. This is going to be lit. <laughs> I believe it's about this boy who discovers some magical paintings. And if you travel through the paintings, you end up going to that world. And soon he finds himself slipping between the veil, between worlds, and he plunges into the wonders and perils of the glim. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Yo, this is amazing. Look at this. I'm so excited. So definitely going to be reading this for Believeathon. And I've got another Emily Rodder book coming in the mail. <laughs> well, it's a bind up. But yeah, for now, I am actually going to go to Big W because they have an incredible selection of books and I just got like a huge like payout from the government for like the coronavirus and everything and I just really want to go and check out what they have because I know they have a ton of middle grade books that I could potentially pick up and read for Believeathon. So it's going to be dangerous. I have been trying to talk myself out of going to BW all week, but I have dreams about it. I literally couldn't sleep last night because my brain wouldn't shut off. It was like fantasizing about all the things I'm going to find in BW. So we're just going to go. Um, it'll be nice to get out of the house and I, I will show you what's, what's there. <laughs> this is so dangerous. freshly showered and still look like trash but I thought I would give you a haul because um because as you saw I went to Big W and I went to Dimmix which is dangerous but I actually really didn't spend that much because Big W is so cheap I got eight books for $90 I'll leave the US conversion on the screen because I know most of you are from the US and then I had points on my rewards card when I went into Dimmix so I think all up I spent like $130 Again, US conversion on the screen. Which, you know, for me, it's okay to spend that much on books every now and again. I deserve it. Not really. I don't really deserve it. I haven't really been doing anything. But yeah, just super grateful for that government payout. We were able to pay all of our expensive bills, put lots of money away, and um, reward ourselves. So Lucas bought alcohol and I bought some books. <laughs> oh, the battery light's flashing at me. Be right back one second, okay? So let's fix this mess. Or maybe we'll just wear it out. Oh my gosh. I'm like Rapunzel. Okay. Now that we look... <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. <laughs> Let's just get into the books. So I got... Like I said, I got eight books at Big W. And I got three books at Dimmix. So I'll start with the books that I got from Big W. Quite a few of these I heard about through Gavin. Are you okay? <laughs> Some of them through other means, but you know, I'll let you know once we get there. So first, oh, itchy chin. Oh, oh, first I'll start off with the only um, young adult book that I got, because I did get one YA book, and that is Fowler's Fair by Hannah Kappen. Um, this, I believe, is Kara's favourite book of the year so far. 
So I really wanted to check it out. I believe this is about um, a girl who is like gang raped at a party by these boys and then her group of friends go on a mission to destroy their lives. So yeah, fun times. Okay, the rest is middle grade apart from two things I bought at Dennis. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there in a second. Okay, first we have Starfell, Willow Moss and the Lost Day by Dominique Valente. I saw this on Gavin's channel. It says, step into a world like no other. She's um, the youngest and least powerful sister in a family of witches. She has a magical ability to find lost things. Then the most feared witch in all of Starfell appears at Willow's door asking for her help. Last Tuesday has gone missing. Oh no. Completely, and without it, the whole world could unravel. Well, that sounds adorable. It also is illustrated. Love that. Yes, stunning. This just looks super, super fun. I believe that is a cat hiding in her bag. Hello. Um, I love anything to do with witches, so sign me the heck up. And if I love this, they also had the sequel, so I can go out and buy the sequel. Another book I heard about from Gav, as well as I saw it um, floating around on Twitter. It's a new release called The Strange World's Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. Welcome to The Strange World's Travel Agency, where every suitcase transports you to a different world. All you have to do is step inside. Does that sound fun? I feel like a lot of these books are like portal fantasies or witchy books, <laughs> which is just my jam. I'm excited. Then another one that is very, very popular at the moment. Um, I also heard about the first book from Gav and quite a few other people. Um, they only had the second book though, but um, Paige from Page to Page, as soon as I said they only had the second book, she's like, I'll buy you the first one. And I'm like, don't worry about it. But um, we all know she's going to do it anyway because she has my address. Yikes. But that's okay, I'm sending her a huge care package soon, so I feel like we might be even. <laughs> Anyways, this is A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison, and this is the sequel to A Pinch of Magic. Um, all I know is this series follows three sisters, and I think they have some sort of magic abilities. That is literally all I know. Um, Oscar has decided to join us. Sir, sir, you're making this very difficult. <laughs> So yeah, I am so excited to read these books. Oh my gosh. Then another one that um, I think a lot of people have heard about, but this was the book for Middle Grade Monthly in April, I think, um, which is a Middle Grade book club that Gav and Jade host. Sorry, Oscar is licking himself furiously uh, behind you and moving the camera. So anyways, that is The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. It's the story of a young boy wizard and a young girl warrior brought up as enemies. Oh my god, that sounds so cool. But they have been so busy fighting, fighting that an ancient evil has returned unnoticed. This looks great. It's also illustrated by... does it say? No, I guess Cressida Cowell did the illustrations. And it has lots of like drawings and stuff. <laughs> Look at that, that's so cute. I've heard the audiobook for this is also incredible because it's narrated by David Tennant so I might listen and read along at the same time because I don't want to miss out on all the illustrations and everything so really keen for this. Then one that I heard about from... who did I hear about this from? Olivia? Liv Reads a Latte maybe? Um, that is Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. This is the first book in I think a six book middle grade series. Um, it follows 12 year old Sophie who is a telepath and she can hear the thoughts of everyone around her. And then I think she like is transported to a magical world that she's a part of that she never knew existed. Um, perfect for fans of Harry Potter it says. I don't know, I've just heard really good things about this and I believe these are like new cover designs that have just been released. So that's cool, because if I love it, I can just go and pick up the other books for super cheap at Big W. <laughs> oh, also Super Space Chick was talking about this series recently. Next, we have a book that I've never heard of before, but I saw it and then I read the synopsis and I had to get it. It's called Winterborn Home for Vengeance and Valor by Ali Carter. The main character's name is April, for one. Number two, 
Uh, it follows April as she arrives at the Winterbourne Home for Orphans, but it isn't uh, what it seems. For one thing, the kids each seem remarkable in different ways. For another, this group of misfits feels more like a family than April had dared hope for. April and her friends must unlock the dangerous secrets hidden at the heart of their home or risk losing it forever. Oh my god, Oscar. <laughs> Doesn't that sound so cool? And this cover is everything. What the heck? And Ali Carter? Okay, I see you. Okay, the last book I bought at Big W, I wasn't planning on buying this, but then I saw they had an anniversary edition and it's absolutely beautiful. But this is Alice Miranda at School by Jacqueline Harvey. This is book one in the Alice Miranda series. This might be an Australian series, I'm not sure. But it basically follows Alice Miranda as she goes off to boarding school for the first time. This actually sounds awesome. So she goes to boarding school, but something is weirdly wrong at this boarding school. The headmistress hasn't been seen for 10 years. There's a mysterious stranger camping in the greenhouse. And while she's there, Alice Miranda must complete a series of impossible tests. Can she really beat the meanest, most spoilt girl at school in a solo sailing mission? Could she camp in the forest all on her own for five whole days and nights? Well, of course, this is Alice Miranda after all. It sounds so fun. There is like a crap ton of books in this series, like I think over 17 books. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. And I honestly feel like buying these isn't a waste of my money because I am having a child and I have a library and I'd love to have these books available for my children as they grow up. Bro. <laughs> Are you okay, Oscar? Okay then. Anyways, so those are the eight books that I bought at Big W. Very pleased with my purchases. I just spat everywhere. Oh, I forgot this one. Okay, next I went to Dear and I went there in search of a pinch of magic, but then Paige said she's gonna buy it for me and that is great because they didn't have a pinch of magic anyways. Then I was also looking for the first book in the Pages & Co series, Tilly and the Book Wanderers. They had the second book at Big W, so I tried to find the first book, but they didn't have it either. But I did find three other books. So I'll start off with the only middle grade book I bought there. It's by one of my favorite middle grade authors of all time, Emily Rodder. We talked about her before, but um, she wrote, this is her most recent book, the name, his name was Walter. Firstly, it has a witch's hat. Secondly, it has a cat on it. Thirdly, I, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> it says, the handwritten book with its strangely vivid illustrations has been hidden in the old house for a long, long time. Tonight, four students and their teacher will find it. Tonight, at last, the haunting story of Walter and the mysterious girl called Sparrow will be read right till the very end. This? Just sounds lit, okay? Emily Rodder knows how to tell a story, let me tell you. Look at these stunning end papers. I mean, the book itself is just gorgeous. And it looks like it's a book within a book. We love to see it. So I am absolutely super keen for this. Then I went to the classic section, as you do, because I always like to peruse what editions of Jane Eyre they have. And they had a new one that I've never seen before. So I bought it. This is published by Flame Tree, and it's a part of the Collectible Classics collection. Never heard of this publisher, never heard of this collection, but it is this stunning little book. But look at the spine. It's so beautiful, what the heck? And it has gold gilded edges. It has a ribbon bookmark. It has stunning end papers. It's just beautiful. And I'm so glad that I went to Demix and found it to add it to my chain air collection. Okay, the last book I bought is a manga. Cause like I said before in this vlog, I now only have one book on my like graphic works, physical TBR. So I decided to get volume one of Yona of the Dawn. I heard about this from Katie's channel, Katie's Book Nook. Um, this follows a princess. Um, when she's 16, she witnesses a loved one's murder and she ends up having to fight for her life. 
so she flees the palace and struggles to survive while evading her enemy's forces. But where will this displaced princess go when all the paths before her are uncertain? I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Yeah, I've just heard this is really good and really fun and I just, look, I wanted it, okay? I have no excuses. So, that's my giant book. Oh wait, I bought a bookmark. <laughs> I saw it and I couldn't leave without it because it is a sloth bookmark. And if you didn't know, I am sloth. Look at it, it's so cute. It says, take it easy. And it's got these sloths reading the books on it. It's so cute. And the cool thing about this is it's got an elastic band. Can you see that? Can you see that? So you can like wrap it around your book, keep it secure. Okay. I just really, really love this. So yeah, that's where we're at. Look, I'm not mad. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really excited. And I'm also not mad because all of these books are going to be read for Believeathon. I am honestly planning on reading like at least two books a day for Believeathon. <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyways, I listened to a little bit more of my audiobook, but I'm not up to our daily goal just yet. So I think I'm going to listen to that and then I'm going to FaceTime with Kara and Paige tonight and start reading Girls of Storm and Shadow. That is the plan and I am excited. <coughs> Did I really just spill water on myself? I'm a two year old. Hello, it is Saturday. Um, I just finished filming my April wrap up and it was a struggle. I don't know what's going on with my eyes today, but they're super sensitive, so I couldn't film in my usual filming location. Like, even now, my eyes are starting to water because it's so bright outside. And I feel like I have, like, major pregnancy brain at the moment, so my thoughts are all, like, jumbled. So, that video is already out. I apologize if it's a complete mess. So, uh, reading update. I read my section of Night of the Dragon yesterday, so I'm a quarter of the way through that, and it's fine like I don't really have any thoughts so far it seems to be very like episodic like the first two like instead of reading like a story that has a beginning middle and end it kind of reads like an anime like it has episodes and yeah it's fun hello my boy so yeah I read the first section of that and then I didn't <laughs> read as much as I wanted to of Girls of Storm and Shadow I was intending on getting to page 132 and I made it to page 57 before I fell asleep, but that's fine. We have the rest of the afternoon. I just have to edit and schedule that video and then I can read for the rest of the day. But I'm really enjoying that too. Um, it's actually a lot more humorous than I was expecting it to be. There is this character that is literally an exact copy of Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender. Personality wise, not looks wise, because this character is part demon and has like snow leopard features. <laughs> but yeah, that character is bringing a lot of humor to the story, but I've heard a lot of mixed things about this. So we'll see how this goes. I'm aiming to get to page 265 today. <laughs> so we have to read 210-ish pages. We'll see how that goes. And I have to listen to today's section of Night of the Dragon. But first I'm gonna edit my video. <laughs> I feel like I sucked at vlogging this week. I'm really sorry. I've been really tired the past few days. I just haven't been sleeping well. But I'm here to wrap up the vlog. And I'm pleased to say last week I read... You know what? I'm gonna count. Okay, four books. I read four books. You read five books, you imbecile. I read two that count towards the month of April. Three. Then I read two books that count towards the Asian Readathon that I started on the 1st of May. I did finish one of them this morning, but I'm still just gonna count it in this because I only had the last like hour of listening left for that. Anyways, let's just get into what I read and then I have an exciting unboxing 
for the end of this video. So, the first book I finished this week was The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. Just kidding, the first book I read was Toffee and I gave it four stars. <laughs> but any hoozle, I really enjoyed this, gave it four stars. Fun times. And then the last book that I read in the month of April was Ice Station by Matthew Riley and I also gave that four stars. That was a ride. <laughs> then last night I finished Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan, the first book I read for the Asian Readathon. And I didn't think I was going to get this done in time because I was planning on reading it over um, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But last night it, it was like... Or maybe it was yesterday afternoon. I had only read 57 pages and this is a 400 page book and I was like I'm not gonna finish this by the end of today but I stayed up late on FaceTime with Kara and Paige and they helped me through it and I read the last 340 odd pages of this last night and I ended up finishing it around at around like 11 p.m. and I actually really loved this like I don't know what book everyone else was reading because everyone was giving this low ratings or DNFing it but I loved it I think I enjoyed it just as much as the first book I think it did take like a hundred pages to really like get going but after that I was hooked like I felt like things were constantly happening it was so sad though there are a few things that happen in this that are just devastating and then there was a huge battle at the end and I don't know how I feel about the ending like ugh. Why is the main character so dumb? But anyways, I really enjoyed this. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars and that cliffhanger, like I need the next book now. I'm assuming it'll come out this November because these books have been coming out every November for the last couple of years. But yeah, four stars, really enjoyed it. Then this morning I finished my buddy read with Kara of Night of the Dragon by Julie Kagwa. This is the third book in the Shadow of the Fox series and I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars. It's definitely not my favorite series of all time or anything, like, it's just fun. I don't know, I didn't feel really, like, attached to it. I will say there is something that happens in this book that made me really, really angry. And if you want to know what it is, um, check my Goodreads re review, which I will leave in the description. I have a spoiler tag on the review, so you can just click view spoiler if you want to know what I'm talking about, but I'm really pissed off about that. But other than that, it was fun and I really enjoyed the ending. So yeah, I ended up giving it a 3.5 stars and I think the audiobooks for this series are really good. I recommend them. So those are the four things that I read this past week. I feel like it was a pretty good reading week, uh, less than I've been reading normally, but that's totally fine. I was bound to burn out at some point. But for the ending of this video, I have an unboxing. I just received the May Alcrate Junior box. No, April. What month is it? <laughs> April Alcrate Junior Box. I'm really excited about this because I think the book that, in, that is inside, I think I know what it is and I'm so excited for it and I'll totally read it for Believeathon. So if you don't want to stick around for the unboxing, that's totally fine. I'll see you next week. But if you do want to stick around, let's get into it. So um, Alcrate Junior is the bee's knees and sometimes they just send me their boxes for free. You all know how much I love our crate and our crate junior. So obviously this is a subscription box that is targeted toward middle grade readers and I'm excited. Let's see what's inside. Ooh. Yes, I totally think the, the book I'm thinking of is, yeah. Whew. Okay, so first we have the little booklet. Um, the theme is Cabin in the Woods. Look at this cute artwork. Oh, we got lots of wormies on the top. <laughs> okay, let's just start with the first thing I see, which is a badge designed by Juniper and Ivy Designs. And it's a wooden badge and it says Pine Mountain Ranger. That's really cute. I love the simplicity of the wood design. And I'll definitely put this on my pin banner. The next thing I see is a bookmark, which I'm always really excited about. Love me a good bookmark. This is made by Kelly Lee Miller. And it says on it, some old fashioned things like fresh air and sunshine are hard to beat. Laura Ingalls Wilder. They wrote the, is it Little House on the Prairie series? I can't remember. But this is really, really adorable. And this is what it looks like. It's very cute. It's like a plastic material. So very nice, very nice. Okay, next. Oh my gosh, what is this? A log building set oh my gosh this is like 
big. So I'm assuming it's just like something you can build. This will be so cool for the kids at work. They will love this. So I'll definitely take this into work. That's another great thing about getting the Our Great Junior boxes is that I get so many cool things to take into work. Okay, next we have what looks like a pen wrapped in this paper. Oh my gosh, oh, this is so cute. This is a woodland carved pen and it's got a little bear on the top. Hello, he's so cute. Um, And it's like a tree. That is so cute, I really love that. Okay, it's actually not the book I thought, which I'm kind of upset about, but I'm sure it's still a really good book. I thought it was gonna be, I think it's called Camp, which is like a queer middle grade story but this book is called echo mountain by lauren walk like he's playing with the wormies in my lap <laughs> this cover is absolutely beautiful let's see what this is about oh this takes place during the great depression and the main character's family is forced to leave their home and town and start over in the untamed forest of nearby Echo Mountain. But then their family is struggling um, with the aftermath of an accident that left their father in a coma. Determined to help her father, Ellie will make her way to the top of the mountain in search of the healing secrets of a woman known only as the Hag. Okay, so it looks like it's like kind of a historical fiction, like quest adventure story, which sounds very interesting we also have a letter from the author and a signed book plate and we also have this absolutely adorable sticker it kind of reminds me of animal crossing a little bit isn't that just so cute so that's the book oh it also comes with a print of a quote from the book loneliness shared is loneliness halved that's really pretty. Okay, so the theme for the May Alcrate Junior box is elements and alchemy. May's book is all about an unexpected quest to return a mystical being to its proper home. That sounds fun. So uh, that is the Alcrate Junior box for April. My favorite items, honestly, I think I have three. The sticker, the bookmark, and the pen. I think are just adorable items. And I'll have to look up reviews for this book because I've never heard of it before. And maybe I'll have to just uh, buy the book I was talking about before. But thank you so much to Alcrate Junior for sending me this box. I'm sure my kids at work will love this building set. But yeah, that is gonna be it for this week's reading vlog. Sorry if it was a little boring. I mean, I guess it was fun. We went book shopping. That's always fun. Yeah, that's gonna be it. I will see you guys soon in next week's vlog. Goodbye.